Now, we're going to look at a few Erlang facts, and this kind of will give you some good ideas about the differences between Erlang and a lot of other programs out there. So one is that Erlang syntax is very similar to Prolog. So if you've ever done anything with Prolog, then you're going to see a lot of similarity with how Erlang syntax works. Now, if you haven't, you're going to see that Erlang syntax is quite different from a lot of programs out there. So if we kind of look at C Sharp, Java, Python, a lot of the web programs, even HTML, CSS, this is going to really be a different kind of world. Erlang is not object oriented. So if we go back to the fact that you can't create your own types, so you can't create your own classes, then of course there's not really any kind of object orientation that's available. So it's all just functional programming. And of course everything in Erlang is immutable, which we hit on earlier. So there's not this ability to reassign variables. Again, it keeps things simple and it allows Erlang to really clamp down on what's going on in the programs. So here are a few examples of immutability, and we're also going to look at this again in the Erlang environment once we get into running some code samples. So let's say you assign a equals 5, and this is Erlang syntax. Now, um, in some of these examples, it's not perfect Erlang syntax because a lot of the statements will end in a period. So that's kind of the termination of the statements whenever you're using code inside the Erlang editor or in the environment. But let's say that you have here 5 is assigned into A. Now, if you try to do something like this where you want to add 5 and 10, you get 15 and assign that back into A, that's not going to work because of immutability. So it creates an error at that point. But you can do something like this where you have the result 15 and you want it into a variable. You just can't do it into A, but you can put it in a variable that you haven't used yet. So in this case, we're assigning it into B. There's no built-in constructs for looping. So you may wonder, well, how do you loop inside of Erlang? A lot of the looping capabilities in Erlang are done through recursion. And if you think about recursion, it's kind of doing the same thing over and over against the same kind of code. This is basically creating this loop. And if you, just like a loop, if you let it, it go without some conditional to terminate the loop, it can go on forever. And we know recursion can create that same kind of situation. Strings are stored as list of integers. So whenever you have a string of data, you can also take the integer equivalent the interpretation of the string and assign that the numbers of that into a variable and you basically have the same thing so we're going to see some code examples later on of doing exactly that now the fact that they are integers means it's great for processing binary data and in general Erlang is really good with this and it kind of goes back to its roots with Ericsson in the telecom industry where they need to be really efficient with the processing of their data, which was largely binary. There's no if then else statement, but we're gonna see later on how Erlang handles this kind of situation. All right, and so to end the section, we're gonna look at a few sites for learning Erlang. So this is kind of if you wanna dive in a little bit deeper into learning Erlang. So here are three, there's Erlang.org, try erlang.org and learn you some erlang and we're going to take a quick look at these real quick so this is the erlang.org website here is basically the i guess you could say the official website that you can use for erlang all right so right here we have our download for erlang and you can see we have windows uh, binary files there's also mac unix versions that are available so Mac ports, which the easiest way on a Mac is to just do this, brew install Erlang, and that will install it through the command line. So you would be in terminal whenever you do these installations. And then again, you can click, you can go to downloads and you'll get to the same place. There's the Erlang documentation. And there are a few books listed here as well. 
You may not find this site the most useful when it comes to Erlang documentation. So let's go into Erlang docs and that so you can see here it's really like a big reference and if I go back to the main site the Erlang reference users manual there's the users guide this is a little bit more helpful so there's the introduction section here and if I go into that this is just a little bit of background and then if we go into construct and matching binaries so let's see constructing matching binaries so here's getting into some Erlang syntax. Then there's functions, pattern matching. So here again is some Erlang syntax. Although I think it is a little bit more difficult to use this site, the documentation on this site versus some of the other sites. So let's go to another site. There's Try Erlang, which is like an editor that you can use to execute Erlang commands. Now. I've um, this is very this is I've used it before. It's good for simple commands, but these functions down here I found it very difficult to try and execute any of this. Um, so basically, it's it's hard to get anything done. But so as a simple um, execution, what if you want time and then you need to terminate this with the period? Hit enter. So there it is. Now you can set your clock properly. And then they have down here a few examples. So you have math square root 144. And if I paste that in, 12. Using some of the modules, though, it's, it's difficult to get any of that working in here. We're going to actually do it with um, the Erlang environment that you download from erlang.org and run things locally there out of files. So we'll create small programs in a file. We'll compile that file and we'll execute it inside of the shell. We'll also run commands directly in the shell. Now for this site, you can see down here available to, uh, tutorials. You can do introduction to Erlang. And then you can just keep going. They have like a little progress meter here and they show you a few things in here that you can type in. So the Erlang shell, just going to let that keep going on. So here's a few different things and lists and tuples, and you can just keep going through all of this. But I believe you'll find um, some of the examples don't actually work because they're not telling you everything you need to do to get them to work. All right, so we're going to look at the last site that was listed on here, and that was Learn You Some Erlang. So this is an online book, and you can buy it, but you can also read it online. And here's the listing of chapters. And then as you, actually if I scroll back up, let's see, starting out there's a shell. All right, here we are. This is where you kind of get into some of the programming, which you can see here. And what's really nice is that the syntax and everything that they're doing here really looks like they're doing it inside of the Erlang shell. So you can type out these commands and it's gonna be just, type exactly and then you will get that result inside of the shell and then up here they have the shell so you can read about this here although we're going to do that as well so that is an overview of Erlang and some additional resources for learning Erlang now we're going to get into installing the shell and then we're going to move into programming Erlang